I mean, you read that book, this man believes in Marxism. This man is a socialist. Mm -hmm. Not only a socialist, he's an international socialist. He's a globalist. His goal, stated in his book, right. is to destroy the sovereignty of nations and bring about a one-world Marxist government. Now, the, the Carter administration was one extreme, and then we came into the Reagan administration, yet... Uh, nothing you, changed. Nothing <laughs> changed. What you're saying is that no matter what the political leanings... They seem to be playing the same game. As long as you're playing their game, it doesn't matter who you vote for, who, who you put in office. They all belong to the other side. They're in the pockets of the Illuminati. When you quit electing professional politicians, when you quit electing the guy who looks nice on television because he speaks good and he looks like the guy you wanted to marry or something yeah. like that, uh, you're, you're playing right into their hands. You know, they made it so impossible for another Abraham Lincoln to get elected to the office of president that it's a wonder that, that, that we even have a chance at all. We need to send people to Congress and to government who are going to clean house, kick all the members of secret societies out of the bureaucracy, lock them up, try them for treason, because they are traitors. So one thing that may help is term limitations. We must have term limitations, and it must be only one term. And forget all this nonsense that anybody goes to Washington don't know what's happening. They don't know what's happening simply because they haven't taken the time as citizens to understand how our government works before they ever go to Washington. You see, it should be a process that starts in infancy. It works its way up, and, and everybody should be taking part in the government. Now, if someone came in uh, uh, to office with this kind of knowledge and with this kind of intent to, to really pu push these people out, would they not be eliminated immediately? Not if they have the people behind them, because what the people would do in one fell swoop, in one election, would elect people who have never served in government before, kick the incumbents out, send citizens to Washington. And here's the way it has to be done. You know right now, you don't even pay your congressman. You know who pays your congressman? The federal democracy of the District of Columbia. The federal government pays your congressman, who's supposed to be representing your state and you. The federal government is a foreign country to your state. Why should he represent you? Not only that, but he goes, he moves to Washington, D.C. He maintains a residence here, but he doesn't live here. And as long as you reelect him, he continues to live in Washington, D.C. Forever, if you keep reelecting him. So they lose all touch with what's back here. They're paid by a foreign government the federal government, they're not paid by the sovereign state of Georgia, mm -hmm. or by you. They have to be paid by you. And they have to live here. They can't move to Washington, D.C. They go to Washington, D.C. for one term, okay, one term only. When that term's up, they have to come back. And you don't pay them exorbitant funds. You pay them just enough to live on comfortably while they're there. Mm -hmm. No fancy giant cocktail parties, none of this crap. And you take care of their family. See, they don't take their family either. That's the other clue. They leave their family here, where they live. Mm -hmm. You, the people of Georgia, take care of their family and their business or their farm or whatever it is they have while they're gone. Now do you think they have a vested interest in representing you? They sure would under those conditions. Yeah. But under the conditions they, have, they, they go yeah. under now, they have no interest whatsoever mm. in taking care of you. Now let's look at the current. They're taking <coughs> care of themselves. The current uh, crop of presidential candidates. Is there anybody even running that represents something that we're talking about here? No, all of them are New World people. Songus, in, in his in his book, he, even uh, everything that he he's written touts the New World Order. All of it, right for Songus's literature. They, they, You're going to see New World Order, New World Order, New World Order, New World Order. Clinton, the governor of Georgia, was selected in 1991 well, go by the Arkansas. Bilderberg, or excuse me, governor, governor of uh, Arkansas, was selected in uh, 1991 uh, by the Bilderberg Group in Baden-Baden, Germany, to be the new president of the United States. Remember what happened to Gary Hart? What did he do? He went out on a boat with a woman who wasn't his wife, and he was destroyed. Look at Clinton. What's happened to him? Nothing. The press is on his side. They're helping the guy. You know why? Because he was chosen by the people who own the press to be the next president of the United States. Now, I don't know if he will be or not. That's up to the American people. Mm -hmm. But if they get their way, he will be. Bush? Bush is one of the most heinous criminals that's ever walked on the face of the earth. 
Bush is the man who's been a CIA agent since his college days. He's a member of the Skull and Bones, the Russell Trust. He was initiated in a, in a casket 